While Raptors fans continue to catch up on their sleep after a couple of late nights having to watch the team in Los Angeles, we're here to ask the question, have the Raptors been slept on this season? Face with me, so Donovan Bennett here with you. Uh, if you remember, before the season started, you and I had the conversation of how competitive we thought this team would be. I leaned one way, I said they would be competitive. You leaned the other way. So I'm here to ask you, and I'm not here to shame you. I'm not here to shame you. Sounds uh, like you are. We are here to have the conversation. Uh, what made you think they wouldn't be as strong as they seem to have been to start this season? Listen, guilty as charged, right? Have people slept on this Raptors team? Yes. I am chief among them. This is all about me because <laughs> I thought that they would be an average-ish team in a bad East. And then at the deadline, they would trade some pieces, like potentially this guy, and build for the future. The future is now yeah, for this team. It really is. And there is a value in not having to play anybody that sucks. <laughs> and so we saw an offseason where a bunch of teams grabbed NBA Jam style, two superstars, and just figured out the rest. This team, from the top two players to eight, nine, ten, all are guys who contribute at a high level. And that's the interesting part of this Raptors team now. It's because we didn't know if they had an 8, 9, 10 as recently as a week ago. Nick Nurse didn't know he had an 8, 9, 10 as recently as Sunday before the game against the LA Lakers. And then suddenly Matt Thomas is showing why he was one of the most coveted shooters outside the NBA game. Ronnie Hollis Jefferson proving to be a bit of a player. And Terrence Davis, another undrafted fine uh, that makes you, again, praise this front office and have people wondering if other teams should send their prospects to the Raptors G League team to develop them because they're doing such a good job at doing this. Here's why I thought the team would still be good to start this season, right? We can look at the small sample size of when Kawhi was not playing last year. 17-5 and in 22 non-Kawhi Leonard games, uh, the Raptors on their way to a championship last season. Well, in those games, Pascal Siakam as your first offensive option, averaging 24 points per game. So people were questioning whether or not he'd be able to take the leap as a guy who was the number one option on the team. Well, he had proven it in a quarter season sample size just a season ago. And this year averaging in and around the same numbers Kawhi Leonard did as a Toronto Raptor a season ago. It, it was always to me insulting to have teams like Indiana, Detroit, Orlando in people's uh, preseason rankings above Toronto because it took, it took away the respect that some of these players, non-Kawhi Leonard category, had earned in that playoff run. A lot of people that don't watch this team often want to say that Kawhi was the sole reason this team won. It's just not true. And so people are seeing that now with how competitive and how good this team actually is. Factually correct. But Kawhi was a big reason why they did of win. Course, of course, of course. As was Danny Green. And when those guys left, and when you replaced them with some guys who either hadn't played in the league before, Terrence Davis, Matt Thomas, or guys, whether it's Stanley or Rondé, who haven't really found their niche in the league, people were like, I don't know how this is gonna play out. Really, the difference that mitigated all of that has been Pascal Siakam. Because I was uncertain, if it was unfair, people were asking him to take another leap after he just took one, but he has. And he was the guy I said would take a leap this season. If the Raptors were gonna be competitive, I said Siakam had to take another leap. OG has to, had to take one as well, and OG almost feels like the Pascal of last year in that he's bringing you things that you never thought he had, and Pascal is the Kawhi, and Kyle Lowry is still Kyle Lowry, a five-time All-Star that's still running this team up until he got injured. And so, again, I always found it so premature that people were sleeping on this team, and again, I'm happy they're waking up now. But Pascal might be the Pascal of last year, because if you look at the numbers, he might be most improved again, again. Again, I was concerned that when he was the star that led the team, that everyone was scheming around, would those numbers maybe regress a little bit? But the fact that his ball handling has improved, his three-point shooting above the break has improved. Oh, it's an unbelievable part of his game now. And you put those together. His three-point shooting above the break off the dribble has improved. It's crazy. But the real thing that I wasn't certain of, and if we're being honest, Nick Nurse wasn't certain of, he slept on some guys on this roster because you mentioned about a week ago, about a week ago, a week ago. A week ago. 
Nick Nurse wasn't playing some of these guys. Well, he called them out, and they stepped up to their credit, right? At least Rondé Hollis Jefferson did, and then Pascal Siakam had to when he was called out for the foul trouble. Maybe the only way to have answered this question was this. In the fourth quarter against the Lakers, when the Raptors were on their way to kind of destroying them, on the court were three undrafted players, Fred Van Vliet, Terrence Davis, Chris Boucher, a 27th pick in Pascal Siakam, and a 23rd pick in Rondé Hollis Jefferson. Yes. The Raptors may not win the title this year, but I, again, am so happy that people's eyes are open at just how good this team and this coaching staff actually is.